Welcome to the Polefish demo. I'm going to walk you through the platform, pricing, and our processes to hopefully answer um, all the common questions that you may have before launching your first survey and make sure that you have all the information you need to get the best possible responses. We'll start with um, the dashboard screen. So once you've made an account in Polefish um, from the login, you will be brought to your dashboard page. Uh, this looks very similar to a Google Docs type of environment where you can see that you have a parent folder and then subfolders listed below. Of course, if you've just made the account, that'll be empty, um, but it's very easy for you to go ahead and just make that um, as well by choosing a new folder uh, and creating a folder named after whatever you want it to be, a uh, person that works on your team or the account that they'll be working on. If you're in one of these uh, larger packages that we offer in business or enterprise account, um, it might be helpful to have those options to be able to track down those surveys per the person that's working on them or things like this. Um, enterprise is probably the most popular package that we have for our business clients, so we'll be walking through that one for the demo purpose. Uh, and you can see here that you can find surveys that are under approval in draft mode. You can also um, search them by name or chronological order or filter them by the survey type. So for, in our case, that would be either a pullfish survey or a third party survey, um, both of which we will address right now. So when you go to click create a survey, uh, you'll have the option to choose a pullfish survey or a third party survey, or you can also hire a researcher. Um, for the purpose of the demo, we're going to use a Pullfish survey. This uses Pullfish's uh, audience of 650 million real consumers, uh, as well as the Pullfish self-serve um, survey tool. So we'll be building the survey and then be able to launch it to those that audience. Uh, hiring a researcher is a little bit more for people who may want um, the extra help to either better understand the survey process or don't really have the time. Uh, to do it themselves, you can pay a small fee and bring on a, a research expert who is also a Pullfish platform expert, uh, have a quick conversation with that person, and they will be able to um, join your team and help you build and launch that survey. The third party survey is more a linking option if you have an existing survey with one of our compatible uh, survey partner tools, you can link that survey to uh, the Pullfish audience so you can still reach the, the massive pool of 650 million consumers, um, but using a survey that you perhaps already have. So for the purpose of the demo, we'll be building the survey um, on the Pullfish platform. So when you choose that, you'll be brought to the targeting page. Uh, very first thing you'll want to do is you know, name the survey. Um, and from there, you'll have um, a pretty straightforward process, actually. You can choose the number of completes. Uh, here, they'll default to 600. You can choose whatever number is appropriate. If you choose too low, there will be a suggestion to maybe bring up that number a little bit to make sure that you're getting um, statistically significant sample. Uh, and just to dive into that audience of 650 million people a little bit more in depth, one of the questions that we often get is about, is about that audience and how are we able to reach so many people and if they're not a panel, how does that work? Um, so our app partnership model where we work with directly with app developers is actually the reason that this is possible. So our partnerships with those developers are worldwide and we are in over 140,000 different apps. Uh, we work directly with them so we are able to implement a line of code that then um, sends the surveys directly in-app, not sending respondents to a separate third-party location. And then when they first receive the option to take a Pullfish survey, they fill out a, a full profile for us, um, and we're able to map those data points back to their mobile ad ID. So that way, in the future, we're able to target them uh, using the information that they've provided and the information that you want for your survey. So diving into that a little further, uh, you can see that we have quite a bit of macro and micro criteria for um, geolocation, everything from country all the way down to postal code. Um, and in our demographic criteria, this is pretty similar to the census, and this is the information that we ask for up front from our respondents. So 
uh, you can map anybody from their career, education, employment, marital status, race, um, household income, and things like that. Um, because of our partnership with the mobile app publishers, we also are able to offer some mobile usage criteria, uh, which isn't always common and isn't something you should probably expect from most other survey providers. So that's important if you want to know more about like the operating system or they, um, you know, an Android user or, or something like that. Uh, that's something we'd be able to find for you. Um, when you're building out the targeting, uh, you probably will want to, um, you know, narrow in and choose some of the specific things. Uh, these items will all be provided to you at the end at no additional cost. Um, but there is like a nominal cost associated with uh, using quotas, gender, age specific um, criteria, as well as the screening questions. And it's just a flat fee. So unlike um, a survey monkey or something, you're just paying 50 cents to add on to ask the question. Uh, so for example, if you choose a screening question, uh, you can see that the price has gone up by 50 cents, which isn't that crazy. And here on the right, there will always be an updated, um, anything you do over here will show up over here to update the cost and the amount of time that you'll um, expect your survey to take. So if we make that a statistically significant sample size, we can see the cost reflected here. Um, and if we want to you know, add a screening question, we offer up to two screening questions that you can use to narrow in on specific behaviors um, and get a better definition of your audience. You can also enable quotas uh, for male, female. You can select or deselect the boxes or choose specific ages um, if that's important to you as well. So moving on from there, we'll take you to the questionnaire. Um, we offer the language prompts in 24 different languages. We are in 160 countries total, so you have a lot of options to reach a lot of people. Um, when you build the questionnaire, it's important to write the questions in the language that your uh, respondents will be familiar with. Um, the survey language is only for the prompts. It does not automatically translate, so just something to be aware of. Um, but we offer 11 different question types. Uh, a few of our most popular are starters up there, but we also have these here. Uh, on the right, you can see an example of what the question looks like, um, a question of how you might use it. And so that gives you some different options to sort of picture how your survey will go. So we choose like a net promoter score. Um, this is always an easy question to understand just how they'd feel about it in a number, um, number ranking kind of way. Um, here you can also add media, so if you wanted to add a photo or a video to better explain what's going on with the question. And once you have a few different questions on here, you can also apply some branching. So you can use skip logic um, to help narrow in the responses from specific audience members even better. Um, once you've built out the survey, you can preview what it would look like for the respondent. Um, here you get a chance to sort of take a sample survey. Uh, and so you can see what an NPS question would look like. So I'm going to choose 10. And then here, uh, when you choose this, this will take you right back to the app that you were engaged in before. So if you wanted to share this information with somebody else on your team, maybe email it to them um, to take a test survey as well, just to check for any typos or um, make sure the questions make sense, you can share that link using this down here. And their answers won't be recorded, so it's not um, something that will affect your results in any way. It's just really more for a chance for you to preview it or share it with somebody else on your team. Um, you can add up to 25 questions on the platform. Um, this is included in Enterprise. You'll have 25 questions automatically. Uh, with Business, it's 20. With the Basic Plan, it's 17. Although for um, an additional fee, you can always add questions on after that cap, but for enterprise, it's always included up to 25 um, as a part of the plan. The reason it does not go past 25 is because we're a mobile first um, survey company and people don't want to take surveys that last longer than 25 questions on their mobile device. So it has to do with our data quality that we don't allow that. 
uh, if you go to checkout, um, nothing will really be a surprise. You can review uh, the survey details, your, your preview link here in the audience that you've selected. Um, also double check your payment information um, and methods. So if you want to use invoice or credit card, uh, just make sure that that information is all correct. And then when you choose checkout, this will send the survey on to our QA department. So uh, we do offer a account manager for anyone on a business or enterprise plan. Um, that person will be able to help you with any billing questions, survey creation questions, um, what's going on with my survey questions, really any questions that you have. Um, but if for some reason they're not available, you can always reach out to our 24 seven support staff. They are always available down here on chat. And we also have a um, team of research experts who will be reviewing your survey to make sure that everything is good to go before launch, which is what happens when you click checkout. Um, if there are any issues, they will let you know. Uh, that information typically comes back within the half an hour, either the correction or the notification that your survey has launched. So you're ready to go instantly. Um, so once your survey has completed, you have you can look at the um, you'll you'll be provided the results to your survey. So this is a sample results page to kind of show an example of how you uh, might be able to process that information. This is a survey that has run. Um, you can see that all of the information, demographic information, is included on the side. It included a number of countries that were targeted, uh, as well as male and female respondents, um, and a few other filters as well. So even if you haven't selected these, because you don't need to up front, uh, you can select them at a later time. It's just if you need quotas that that would have to be obviously input at the beginning. So um, if you wanted to just have a look at um, just what respondents under the age of 24 think about something, you can deselect the other age groups and the information on the side will update uh, to reflect what you've selected on the left. So um, that'll give you some information that you wanted to have here. You can also choose um, <coughs> information uh, down below to further dive in on that subject. You can export your data. Um, the raw results can always be exported to uh, SPSS, PDF, or Excel. You can also export your current view, so for any information that you've selected up here if you just want that. And you can also share your link with uh, somebody who doesn't have a Pullfish account or someone else on your team. Um, this just makes a public link so they can see the results, but it doesn't let them like affect the results or, or mess around with them um, in a way that's going to affect anything that you've been doing in here. Um, if you have a presentation, you can also export an image. So, um, you know, this one is doesn't really have any information on it because I've selected things. So here's an image that maybe you want to have. You can um, download the image to your uh, computer and then you can go ahead and add it into a presentation, which is a nice option if you wanted to like quickly pull some data points and have a good visualization for that. Uh, so given that information, it's kind of how the platform works. Um, you can see more about the right plan for you on our pricing page. Uh, you can see that we offer a few different options, um, basic, business, enterprise, or elite. So um, the basic plan is really more for people who are doing kind of ad hoc surveys, um, are, are not sure how their usage is gonna go for the year. Uh, business and enterprise are for more high volume or high um, respondent number surveys uh, for, for teams or larger businesses who need to do quite a lot of research. And the plans are paid up front. Um, they don't cost a ton. So honestly, like if you have a large enough research need, this will pay for itself in almost no time. Um, the biggest difference between these plans is probably the cap on the cost per interview. As you can see, it goes up to $4 per response on our basic plan, and it caps out at two and a half on enterprise. So think of it as like kind of bulk savings sort of package. Um, you also can have up to 25 questions per survey. On our basic, it's 17, and then after that, you are paying per question. 
On business, it's up to 20 questions, and on enterprise, it is always 25 questions. But you can use them or not, but you will not be billed additionally past that. <coughs> Incidence rate is um, another thing that is slightly different. Uh, the survey will automatically stop if there is any issue reaching the audience if the incidence rate becomes too low. Um, we do try to give you the best quality possible, so after a certain point, um, if there's any issue, that, that will not be fielded. Uh, support will reach out to you if there is an issue, and there will be a refund issued if needed. Um, for the most part, we're very good at reaching niche audiences, but sometimes if it's like heart surgeons in Texas or something that's a little too specific, um, we might not be able to, in which case we're going to be completely transparent with you about that and make sure that you have uh, are able to go get the research you need for that. Um, other than this, we're, you know, we're, we're happy to discuss any other questions that you have to help you choose the right plan for you or answer any questions you have about research in general or about the Poolfish platform. If you uh, would like to on the site, you can always reach out to support, again, in the lower right hand corner. Or you can reach out to sales at poolfish.com. Uh, to learn more about any of these packages uh, or information that you have questions about.